Today in the Milken Institute studios, we have Joel Kurtzman. Joel is a senior fellow at the Milken Institute and also our director of the Center for Sustainable Energy Future. Welcome, Joel. Thank you, Jennifer. The president has made a call for a new clean energy policy, and I wanted to bring you in to talk about biofuels. Currently, where, are we, where are we on biofuels, and what is it going to do for our future? Well, it's very interesting because biofuels are pretty much misunderstood. Mm -hmm. The good news is we produce a lot of them. Uh, the better news is we're going to pr produce more of them in the future. But there's a lot of uh, misplaced uh, nervousness about biofuels, especially about corn-based ethanol. I see, and, but we've been increasing our production of corn-based ethanol, even though, as we know, um, there were some problems with it. Even at the Milken Institute, we published a piece in our Milken Institute review in 2007 talking about the problems with ethanol. Yeah, and, and what's interesting about ethanol is that the United States is now the world's largest producer of ethanol. It used to be Brazil. Brazil produced its ethanol from sugarcane. It ran it in its cars. Brazil's essentially energy independent now. Hmm. But the United States, which has bigger demand, but is the largest producer, and we've done it from corn. Part of the reason is that the yields and the efficiency of the processes in the United States has gotten a lot better. Talk to me a little bit about that. Well, it used to be, in, and if you saw um, the uh, Al Gore film, you, you saw that he talked about ethanol, and, and he said that essentially one input of energy produced, if you're lucky, one output of energy. So it was pretty much a, a zero-sum game. But, but the fact is that over time, we've gotten much better at it. So one input of energy can produce as much as four outputs of energy. And that's very good news. So it shows that the processes are getting better, that uh, the incentives and the R&D that we've put into this sector, which is now getting large, uh, are working. Can you give me a little bit of an understanding of what's going on with government funding for biofuels and clean energy in general? Well, we've had a lot of funding from the government in terms of the uh, stimulus bill. And uh, that's worked well in terms of increasing production, increasing yields, and R&D. And over the years, are, are we seeing a trend up in clean energy investment from the government or down? Yes, we've seen a trend upward from the government, but it's leveled off, and we can't expect that to last forever. And in fact, we're starting to see projections that show that the government piece of the energy, uh, alternative energy bill, is likely to go down. Now. Part of that uh, for ethanol comes out of the uh, Department of Agriculture and there are other sources of it. Uh, so so you know, on balance, we still have good funding for alternative energy. But if you look at other sources of alternative energy, solar, wind, and so forth, we, we've had an up and down situation with the government in terms of tax subsidies, t uh, tax abatement, all kinds of uh, programs that have been on and off. And what we've seen is that investment tracks those subsidies. Exactly, and so sp specifically speaking on biofuels, what is the venture capital or private equity funding looking like? Well, unfortunately, venture capital has gone down mm -hmm. in this whole sector. Part of the reason is that we've been so good at it we, and we're producing so much, we actually had a glut of uh, ethanol. So that scared a lot of people and, and people lost money. Uh, when they invested in uh, alternative energies like uh, ethanol. And here at the Milken Institute, we're always looking for ways that the capital markets and different financial innovations can really unlock the capital to release it into whether it's the R&D, building the production, or the distribution. Um, what do we think is out there for in the capital markets and in financial innovations to really jumpstart the industry? Well, there are a lot of things that, that should be used and can be used. The first one are purchasing agreements, and I think that this is a very powerful tool. The, the United States military is the largest single consumer of fuels in the country, one of the largest in the world. And if, that, uh, if the military, which has a green uh, orientation now anyway, if, if they were to shift toward biofuels in terms of their purchasing, that would have a tremendous effect throughout the economy, but it would also, uh, more importantly, have a big effect on producers. It would be a, a guaranteed source of demand, and that's what we re need right now. Second thing we need is to have some uh, future markets that are deeper and longer term. 
Right now, you can invest in uh, biofuels, but only about 12 months out. If you were able to extend those contracts longer, there'd be a, a, a better market for those fuels and, and would also see more capital going into this sector and fueling, no pun intended, some of this investment. Well, that sounds um, very much in line with what we're trying to do here, and I know we've gathered some of those thoughts and some more, both on the industry and the financial tools that can help it, in our new report, um, and that is Scaling Enter uh, Enterprise Finance, the Future of Biofuels. It's available on our website. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jennifer.